Crazy rock music facts everyone should know. The 80s pop band Milli Vanilli was created by German producer Frank Farian, who had session musicians sing while dancers Robert Pilatus and Fabrice Morvan lip-synced. In 1989, a backing track error during a performance exposed the lip-syncing, leading to public outrage. The band lost their Grammy and 26 lawsuits were filed for consumer fraud. In 1974, while touring Australia, Frank Sinatra called female journalists broads and hookers, triggering a nationwide strike. Unions demanded a public apology, with workers refusing to support his shows, provide room service, or refuel his jet for departure. Singer and recording artist George W. Johnson, born in 1846, sold over 25,000 wax cylinders. Since each recording was a master back then, he had to perform the same song repeatedly, sometimes 50 times a day. One of his most famous songs was The Laughing Song, featuring a chorus of hysterical laughter. In 1973, after Graham Parsons of the Flying Burrito Brothers died, his manager Phil Kaufman and assistant Michael Martin, posing as mortuary workers, stole his body. Fulfilling Parsons' wish, they took it to Joshua Tree and set it on fire. Authorities found the body partially cremated, returned it to his family, and charged Kaufman and Martin with grand theft. They were fined, but paid for it with the money raised through a benefit concert. The term cover song has a racist origin from the 1950s, when record companies had white artists re-record popular songs by black artists to play on white radio stations, limiting black artists to black radio. An example is Shaw Boom by The Chords, later covered by The Crew Cuts. Iconic Motown bassist James Jamerson recorded the bass line to Marvin Gaye's What's Going On, while lying on his back because he was too drunk to stand. Alice in Chains' EP Jar of Flies was originally recorded by the band in order to test their chemistry with their new bassist, Mike Inez. They had no plans to release the tracks until their label heard them. It went on to become their first EP to debut at number one on the Billboard charts. Queen guitarist Brian May uses banjo strings on his electric guitars. Banjo strings are much lighter and thinner and can bend much easier, making that signature Queen sound. In 1990, American singer-songwriter Curtis Mayfield became paralyzed from the neck down after stage lighting equipment fell on him while he was being introduced at an outdoor concert. Afterwards, he discovered he could continue to sing by lying down and letting gravity pull down on his chest and lungs and went on to record an album in 1996. Sid Vicious was such a poor bassist that when performing with the Sex Pistols, his bandmates would often unplug his amplifier mid-performance. Danny Elfman came up with the theme to Batman on a flight from London, but since he couldn't write music, he kept running to the bathroom to record himself on a tape recorder whenever he had a new idea, causing the flight attendants to think he was a junkie. Shiny Happy People by R.E.M. was used as the theme song to the unaired pilot for the sitcom Friends before it was replaced by the Rembrandt's I'll Be There For You. Jason Page, the singer of the original Pokemon theme, didn't expect its popularity and knew nothing about the franchise when he recorded it. He was paid a one-time fee with no royalties, but considers it a minor part of his career, having worked as a backing singer for Michael Jackson, Billy Joel, and Frankie Valli. Alex Chilton and Chris Bell, the writers of the theme song to That 70s Show, get $70 each time the show airs. They refer to it as That $70 Show. The song just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in was originally intended to be a warning about the dangers of using LSD. In 1967, Kenny Rogers covered it, leading to it becoming a counterculture hit and a long-lasting representation of the late 60s psychedelic era. Jefferson Airplane's song White Rabbit was not only inspired by Lewis Carroll's psychedelic story Alice in Wonderland, but also by the lead singer, Grace Slick, constantly taking LSD for 24 hours and listening to Miles Davis's album Sketches of Spain, on repeat until it burned into her brain. The lead singer of The Killers, Brandon Flowers, after listening to Is This It by The Strokes, got so depressed at how good it was that he scrapped all the songs they had been working on except one. That song he kept was Mr. Brightside. Some say he should have scrapped that too. In 1970, before a show, Jimi Hendrix's manager slipped Jimi some LSD in an attempt to sabotage his new, less marketable band. Jimmy poorly played two songs, then told the crowd, that's what happens when Earth f***s with space, and then walked off stage. The final words of Terry Kath, founding guitarist for rock band Chicago, before dying from an accidental self-inflicted gunshot wound, were, 
What do you think I'm gonna do, blow my brains out? Aerosmith guitarist Joe Perry's wife didn't know who he or Aerosmith was when they met. He didn't ever talk about it, and she only discovered it a few years later after finding gold records in some old boxes. This was after songs like Walk This Way, Dream On, and Back in the Saddle. Malcolm Young, the guitarist of ACDC on their last world tour, had to relearn the songs before each show, as he was suffering from the early stages of dementia. In 1971, Fleetwood Mac had to cancel a sold-out show booked at the Whiskey A Go Go when their guitarist Jeremy Spencer simply vanished into thin air. He was eventually found weeks later having cut off all his hair, dressed in shabby clothes, and had joined a cult called the Children of God where he had started a new band. Noodles, the guitarist for The Offspring, kept his job as a high school janitor for three months after the band got big because he promised his boss he wouldn't quit till the end of the school year. When ACDC was accused of backmasking satanic messages in Highway to Hell, guitarist Angus Young said, You don't need to play the album backwards because we never hid the message. We called the album Highway to Hell. It's right in front of you. Adam Jones, the guitarist of the rock band Tool, also worked on makeup and set design for Hollywood blockbuster films such as Jurassic Park, Terminator 2, and Ghostbusters 2, Dave Mustaine, Megadeth singer and guitarist, had to reteach his left hand how to play guitar in 2002. He was diagnosed with radial neuropathy after falling asleep with his arm over the back of a chair, leaving him unable to make a fist. The guitarist for the band Extreme wrote the band's second highest charting single, Wholehearted, while he was taking a dump. The famous riff to In Excess's song Need You Tonight appeared in guitarist's Andrew Ferris head while waiting for a cab to go to the airport. He then asked the cab driver to wait a couple of minutes while he grabbed something from his motel room. In reality, he went up to record the riff. Kerry King, guitarist for Slayer, played the guitar riffs and solo for No Sleep Till Brooklyn by the Beastie Boys. Guns N' Roses lead guitarist Slash once walked in on his mom naked in bed with David Bowie. George Clinton doesn't know who played guitar for one of Funkadelic's greatest guitar solos, Get Off Your Ass and Jam. The mystery guitarist was a white heroin addict that asked to sit in and was paid $50. Bubbles from Trailer Park Boys is a gifted guitarist who was in a band with Alex Leifson, founding guitarist of Rush. They were called Bubbles and the Shit Rockers. Nirvana guitarist Pat Smear appeared as a background dancer in Prince's Raspberry Beret music video. He was nearly sent home because he couldn't dance, but was allowed to stay because Prince liked his hair. There is a musical genre called Nintendo Core that combines elements of video game theme music and sound effects to modern punk rock or metal. 